In today's video, is staying lean holding you back? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Arella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is going to be a review of something that comes from Mass. For those that aren't familiar, Mass is the monthly application of strength sport written by three awesome guys, Eric Helms, Mike Zordos, and Greg Knuckles. Now, these guys are experts in the field of strength and conditioning, everything that has to do with body composition, but what I like most about this re research review is that it takes all the research that's out there, and you guys have all seen this research. Um, you've seen it posted up on like MSN or other places and kind of misrepresented. Well, these guys really help by taking the research, reviewing it, and then giving you their thoughts on what was good about it, what was bad about it, and how it relates to what we do. What I do as a coach and an athlete, and what you do as a potentially a coach, an athlete, or just someone that's interested in adding muscle, getting leaner, getting stronger, whatever it might be in the fitness realm. So if you're not familiar with Mass, there's a link in the description box, go check it out, and uh, you guys can get your own subscription. We're going on two years now that these guys have been crushing this thing. And so today's research review is about the idea of the potential side effect of staying leaner on progress. And what's cool is the guy that, that did the research uh, review this week, Eric Helms, somebody I've known for, gosh, over a decade probably, um, though we didn't meet until about three years ago. But, you know, I knew him from, from many years from just running in the same circles as a natural bodybuilder. He has since gone on to you know, start a, a company, uh, 3DMJ, if you guys aren't familiar with that, 3D Muscle Journey. And um, now he has a PhD, so he is Dr. Eric Helms. What I really like is Eric's take on this because we have such a similar background. And so he's looking at this research through a lens that's similar as mine as someone who's both been a builder, a bodybuilder, a competitive power lifter. Let's discuss what Eric has to say. So basically this, study was about females. They took female track athletes and what they noticed was that there was the potential for what they call the female triad. That was low energy, loss of menstrual cycle, and the potential for a loss in bone density. Now, those are some pretty serious side effects. But as we know, as competitors, as we that like try to get lean, we really want to try to minimize those. And so what I really like about this study is it, it, it explains in layman's terms, as Eric does, that there is potential to do damage to your body by trying to stay too lean. Now, they only looked at women here, but I think there's also the potential for there to be issues with men. Why? Well, in the Instagram age, it can be very, very tough to let go of these abs once you've got them in, once you've got some veins going. I, my person, I myself personally can attest to this, you know, having competed a couple weeks ago, it's been difficult for me to let go of that, to let go of that crazy conditioning and looking in the mirror every morning and seeing all these details. But the fact that I know I need to get better, put on more muscle, means I need to allow myself to come out of this, this caloric negative state. Now, for women, the impact, well, they can be reproductive. You can literally stop having a menstrual cycle. So as a coach, that's one thing that I look at as a positive is when we can get someone that's been competing to come out of prep get their calories back up in an efficient manner, safely, and without risk to the psychology, but getting back to your menstrual cycle. I think that's a great sign for women when our, when our hormones are acting normally. And for men, likewise, though we don't get a menstrual cycle, we do start to notice things like sex hormones when they ramp up. Well, maybe we're a little bit more amorous. Maybe our sex lives become a little bit more interesting versus when we're ultra low body fat. So there are things that we can both look for when we're coming out of this. A huge one is going to be performance. Anyone knows that's dieted down to ultra lean body fats or even just gone through a fat loss phase, there's going to be issues with performance and some of that's going to be tied to low body fat. So getting your body fat into a healthy place and making sure that you're actually in a caloric surplus or slightly above maintenance is really the best way to make sure that we're improving and we're performing. And for those that get caught up too much, paying attention to just the physical appearance of their bodies. Remember, for us to get better, we have to kind of let go of that. We have to make sure that we're putting ourselves in a place to be successful for the long term. Yes, I've seen people damage themselves by staying too lean for too long and getting too focused. When you do that, when you compete, 
As an example, someone that competes in the spring and then the fall, and then you do that two or three years in a row, you've essentially been in contest shape all year for the last couple of years in flux going in and out. Um, and, and what happens is eventually the body just fights back. It just goes, that's it, I'm done. I, I can't handle this anymore. And then you get some psychological adaptations. I've seen people become uh, very obsessed with food and then they get way over stage weight. Then it compounds because they don't wanna go to the gym because they're embarrassed. We really wanna stay away from this, okay? So we wanna do a planned, scheduled approach to coming out of competition season, putting on a little bit of body fat, maybe done in a manner that's too quick, because if you put it on too quick, it can damage the psychology, it can really set you back. But that's a personal issue. That's something that you've got to decide for yourself. Have that discussion, make a decision, and see how it goes. The most important thing is that you have a plan, okay, to get your body fat higher post-contest, post-diet. Now, the real question here to answer is, what is the place where we can perform and stay lean? And that's a question that is different for every single person. There is no one right answer. We all maintain different set points of body fat and find that we're happy. What I would suggest is that you try to keep it as low as possible so that you're enjoying things, but if you notice fatigue, mood, recovery are not where they need to be, well, allow yourself to gain a little bit more body fat. See what happens. As long as you are me metabolically improving, meaning you're adding calories and reducing cardio while adding body fat, you're always gonna be able to get that body fat to come off, okay? The real problem lies when you put on body fat real quickly and then you go back in your diet because you're not really getting much metabolic benefit from that, but you're getting a lot of body fat benefit from that. So keeping calories elevated for an extended period of time, keeping cardio suppressed for an extended period of time, that's gonna put you in position to be the most successful. So is there gonna be more research on this? Is Eric Review going to be the last study we see? I would think not, especially considering they were looking at people that were like national level and Olympic level sprinters and athletes. I'm sure those guys are very interested in optimizing their performance because Olympics, right? Whereas we are more interested in optimizing our look on stage and our look in the off season. So I think it's a very valuable insight and uh, I hope that Mass continues to put out some great stuff like this. So again, if you're interested in Mass, go ahead and click the link below, check out what they have to offer. If you enjoy the video, click the subscribe button and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.